What's up, my beautiful butterflies? It's the Awakened Butterfly, and I'm back with another video. If this is your first time coming across my channel, please stay for the entire video. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. I hope everyone is taking care of themselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Welcome and welcome back, everybody. Today's video, I will be talking about um, some really important things before I get into that. I would like to talk about the fact that we all are chosen. If you're watching this channel nine times out of ten, you are chosen to do something very important. It could be to spread awareness. It could be to heal, to nurture. Uh, a lot of times when you say that, a lot of people's mind go way, way out of the box. And they're like, well, what is chosen? How am I chosen? How would I know if I'm chosen? Well, guys, if you're going through all of these things that I talk about in my videos, there's a good chance that you are chosen. And that's why you're going through so many things because there are some people out there that are against chosen ones because they are the ones that will be doing all of the exposing to all of the wrong doings going on in America society today. Um, and that's going to lead to what I'm going to be talking about today. And in my previous video, I was talking about when we speak our truth, there's always someone out there who's not happy about it. And there's always someone behind the scenes trying to plot on a way to silence you. And that's what's going to bring me to talk more about um, what a handler is and who they actually work for. And we're going to get into a deep detail about the handler today. Um... A lot of the things that they do, a lot of the characteristics that they have to possess in order to be qualified to do what they do. Because believe it or not, guys, this is a job for some people and the people that hire them to do the job, they are looking for a specific type of person. So um, with that being said, first we're going to get into what a handler actually is and the Regular definition, the Google definition for a handler <clears throat> is a controller, um, a trainer whose job is to deal with a certain person, thing, or situation. So um, in this case, we're going to be talking about the handler that deals with another person, which is a person controlling or training another person. These people usually work for the CIA or other powerful organizations. They are sent out on missions to target certain people for certain reasons at certain times. And these things fall into category with a lot of the certain characteristics that they do have to possess in order to be able to carry out this job. A lot of those characteristics include them being intelligent because they have to be able to carry out the mission as well as develop, help the CIA or other powerful organizations develop new skills in order to control their prey, which I don't like using the word slave, but they do um, refer to the prey as the monarch slave. I usually say the victim or the prey because they are being targeted. So they are the prey and they are a victim because they are, they will soon be victimized once they are in contact with these people. <clears throat> They also have to get in close contact with you enough to know the weaknesses and triggers of the of you. Uh, what you like, what you don't like, what your weaknesses are, the things that another person can do to break you down. These could be guilty pleasures, things that you indulge in, things, you know, that your uh, habits, that certain habits that you are trying to break. They take these things and use them against you in order to control you to get you to continue to play into their programming tactics. Um, and when I was explaining about knowing your weaknesses, um, this is also to uh, keep you in line to maybe threaten to blackmail or extort a person if they don't obey them and do what they want them to do. They also want the person to be strategic um, so they will know how to use the control skills and when. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <coughs> because they do have certain times 
that they carry out their plots and plans on certain people in order to make them seem like they're a um, real actual part of your reality. Um, they also have to... Ooh, wow, I'm so sorry, guys. This is real life. <laughs> this is real life. I am not going to edit this out. Um, my camera is propped up on my desk and... Um, well, my phone with my um, ring light, and it almost fell. But I, I'm going to take that as the spirit's not liking the information that I'm putting out today. And I really don't care. I'm going to keep going. We are protected by God and angels, so I fear nothing. Let's keep going, guys. Um, so, like I was saying, the charming. Um, they want their handlers to be charming because they want them to be able to hold um conversations with you that will make you feel comfortable they want to them to come off as a nice person to talk to um very engaging very um <clears throat> warm personality in order to make you feel comfortable enough to trust these people and open up to them so they can withdraw information from you um, these people do have different identities and uh, I'm going to name a few. Um, they can disguise as Jehovah's Witnesses. No offense to anyone who's a Jehovah's Witness or are any relation to the Jehovah's Witness. I'm not saying all Jehovah's Witnesses are working for these people, but a lot of them are disguised as Jehovah's Witnesses. Door-to-door uh, -door salespeople, they could be selling anything. Uh, these people will... And I'm not saying all door-to-door -door salespeople are like this, but these are some of the people that they use that they feel have great communication skills, warm, uh, bright personalities that, you know, will get you to open up to them. Uh, they can be invited into your home, things of that nature. Um, also, um, it could just be a flirtatious charming person that you could meet somewhere at at your local grocery store or the library or the mall or anywhere um this person is aiming uh to form a close relationship with you as with the rest of these people um if the jehovah's witnesses and the um the door-to-door -door sales people don't come back the purpose of them coming into your home is to scope out possible surveillance areas and things like that um and of course you know the traditional handlers uh possible traditional handlers family friends uh co-workers um gym trainer uh family counselor etc um if you are close to the person let's say for instance they are targeting someone that you are close to these people will sometimes try to form a close relationship with you in order to um, spy on your close acquaintances. You know, they will use you in order to get close to the person that they're really um, targeting. Um, they will come close to you for a while. It, they won't attack the person that's close to you right away. They will become close to you and they will strategically plan their attack. Um, on that person that they're actually spying on and the reason why they plan everything out and make it so strategic so you wouldn't think that they had anything to do with it and you would think that it was just a spontaneous occurrence like something that just happened and not planned by anyone um the overall motive of all of these people trying to get close to you from the jehovah's witnesses to the salespeople, are to like i said before um is to invade your personal space, uh, to surveillance your home. Uh, these people are very intelligent. They find ways to get into your home without keys. Um, and like I said, these are the people that are so close to you, you wouldn't suspect anything. And they wouldn't come into your home while you're home. They will do this when you're not home in order to go through your personal items, uh, check surveillance, um, put in more surveillance or whatever um and you know the pieces of information and the things that they find where they are in your home they also look for things to hold as a collateral to um use as something to control you 
once if or if you ever found out that you were being set under programming and you wanted out they will use these things against you um and that brings me to the blackmailing and extortion um these things are utilized within their control tactics um in the 1950s um a child was under programming and became aware of it and was told um, that they had a bomb in their stomach and it would detonate if they tried to leave and if they didn't obey um, the rules that they were given it would detonate so um, that was something that they used against children uh, as a scare tactic at, to get them programmed at a young age which is very sad um, every piece of information about you that they feel is weak, a weakness of yours, and something that will embarrass you, those are the things that they look for. That's the whole motive of forming the relationship with you is to uh, find things on you that they can use for blackmailing and extortion. Um... These things can be um, used against you and you will be exploited. Um, they, they implant this fear into their victims, you know, to keep them from planning an escape and exposing them in the future if they ever did escape. But guess what, guys? There are many people that have. Um, this is one that I've never talked about and it's very, very important. And that is sexual exploitation because, guys, this is happening a lot with a lot of people. This is how a lot of people are getting exploited and blackmailed. Um, in the 1950s, um, George White was an agent who worked for the MK Ultra Mind Control Program, and he supplied the CIA with a list of prostitutes, uh, people that were arrested um, for that um, crime. And he supplied it to the CIA. And what the CIA did was study these people and they also um, tried to form study methods based around prostitution in order to find a way to use it to push their agenda. And that was one of the questions that they were using to help form um, a tactic was how to use prostitutes to carry out their agenda, how to train them to carry out their agenda, and they also studied the elements of seduction. Um, this is how they came up with the method of the Black Widow Spider. And this is where they trained prostitutes to um, use certain, you know, uh, manipulation tactics on their clients to get them to open up to them so they can get, so they can gain, at, um, I'm sorry, blackmailing information from them. Um, how they would do this, one of the ways they would do this is um, the ladies would charge their time for their time and they would stay past their time that they were paid. This would shock their client and make them gain an ego boost. And with that ego boost, it will make them grow vulnerable. And with that vulnerability, it will cause them to open up to, <coughs> to the prostitutes more. Um, revealing sexual fantasies. Um, um, you know, maybe some sexual secrets that they are not proud of anyone knowing um, or just anything, um, any type of exposing information just to be uh, just feeling comfortable with a new person that they feel probably wouldn't, you know, care about these things to tell due to their lifestyle. Little do they know these things that they are telling these women um, are being reported back to the CIA and it is being used as blackmail and extortion against them. And if they don't know that they're being programmed at that time, they will soon find out when they try to go against the grain, if you know what I mean. Um, 
So, like I said, this this method of seduction through the CIA for the prostitution is called the Black Widow Spider. I'm not saying all prostitutes are working for the CIA and they use this method, but a lot of them do because a lot of them work for the CIA, believe it or not. Um, this helps them to provide sexual desires for people. At the same time, gaining information from them for blackmailing purposes. So, um, they were looking at it like a fair trade, but nowhere near. Um, guys, this was mostly happening to married men. Um, men that were in stable uh, relationships that were probably planning to get married. You know, had a bright future ahead with their partner. Um, people that were probably running for a high status in their state or city. Um, a pastor, uh, a governor, you know, and as you know, possibly presidents, you, you know, we've heard a lot about a lot of presidents being wrapped up in sex scandals. So, um, yes, they blackmail their own advocates as well, because a lot of these uh, people of high statuses, they are part of the CIA. And I know you guys are like, really? Like, yes, they do. They blackmail their own advocates in case they grow tired of the programming and what's going on and feel like they want to speak out. This is some things that they can hold over their head just in case they don't want to be part of it anymore. Um, the handler is handpicked by the CIA based on their position and their natural intelligence. Their natural intelligence at first is what gets them in the door. Once they're in the door, guys, they are um, put under further training um, in order to um, manipulate these controlling skills developed by the CIA on their future prey, whoever that they're assigned to. Um, the method that they also came up with, it was more like, um, human nature. They were thinking more like, okay, what does a human want and need? And they were with coming up with ideas based on our wants and needs. And they were also picking people, you know, based on their intelligence, their intelligence level. And, you know, what they can provide based on that want and need, if that makes sense. Like, this person is advanced in this area, so they will be good at doing or of carrying out this agenda. And this person is good at this, so they will be good at carrying out this agenda. You know, they were, were really careful about the people that they were picking to do this. Um, one of the basic ideas that they came up with in order to control their victim was to control their entire environment. And guys, once um, these people are under programming, you will start to see the things that they place in your environment. And there are two storylines that they use. Um, the victim is designed into what is called a story immersion of their environment. And the story immersion is based on two movies, guys, okay? And that is Alice in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz. Once these people are in the programming, they're either going to be in one storyline or the other or both. They will start to see restaurants, uh, people that remind them of these characters, everything, once they become under this programming, okay? Um, <coughs> they will start to see objects in relation to the storylines, uh, The Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland. Um, now within the environment are planned events based around these storylines, but it's your, but it's, it's the person's life that's being programmed. Okay. Um, it's really been orchestrated by the elites, but the story immersion due to it taking place with, you know, people in your real life, people in your environment and, uh, real life places, it seems like it's. It's a reality, but it's really being orchestrated by the elites, of course. Um, and, you know, many... We're going to talk a little bit about these celebrities, guys. Um, many, if not all, celebrities have experienced this, having a handler. Um, they have a handler, which ensures that they are, number one, doing what they're supposed to be doing as far as their 
um, job as an artist. Um, and to also make sure that they're not stepping out of line. Make sure they, they know that most celebrities start to know that they, they already know. It, or it doesn't take long for them to know that they are a part of something. Um, the handler that is assigned to them is to make sure they stay in line and don't drift off into out of the programming. If they do, it is their job to put them back into programming. Whether it's, you know, threatening them with some type of blackmail or extortion that they have on them and they always get things on them. Or um, any other programming um, mind control tactics that they use. They, they will use those things against them. Um, also, it's, it's pretty much called a glitch. Um, they're already under programming, so if there's ever a glitch and they snap back into themselves, it's the handler's job to put them back under the programming. However, there are many who have snapped out of the programming and that has uh, made many plans and attempts to escape. Um, due to the heavy surveillance that they have on these celebrities, uh, there are a lot of them who have escaped through airport just to be picked up by another handler at an airport in another state. That's how high the surveillance is on these celebs. And that's also a one-up that people who are not celebrities and are being targeted have on celebrities that are being targeted. The ones who are, you know, normal people that are being targeted have a better chance of um you know moving around these people as with the celebrity has pretty much signed over their life giving these people full access to everything about them within their life it's hard for them to get away from it um and um with that being said okay now let's say for instance this person says, you know, I want out of this. I don't want anything to do with this anymore. And let's say, for instance, fortunately, but unfortunately, but fortunately, at that time, they say, you know what? We don't need you anyway. We have someone else to not only replace you, but to obey us and to push the agenda way better than you. You can go. They don't actually let them go, guys. This is where the uh, electronic harassment is at its all-time high. This is where they make these people think that they're free now, going to be able to walk away, and they hit them with all the electronic harassment and get them admitted into a mental institution and they're automatically diagnosed with schizophrenia. It, it happens all the time, guys. You, you see it a lot where these celebs get ready to speak out and they automatically label them as crazy and say something's wrong with them. Um, the individual is now victimized after this. They went from a superstar to a victim because no one believes anything that they're saying due to the way that these people made these things look. Also, due to the fact that it's hard for individuals to believe that programming is happening in, in American society today. It's so hard for people to believe this. People laugh at you. They call you crazy. They say that you're overreacting. You need to take a chill pill. You need to calm down. You're being a negative Nancy. They say all of these things instead of just taking the time to understand, you know, to try and understand what you're saying and to, you know, they know something's going on. And sometimes fear also keeps these people from, you know, wanting to agree that there's something actually going on um you know at the end of the day guys what parts of our lives are not controlled by these people i mean like if you really think about it okay we wake up we go to work we have a boss that is rightly authorized to tell us what to do okay um we get we get paid when they pay us um as uh, when I was talking about Machiavelli in my other video, well, being a Machiavellian, um, I also found out uh, for many years, uh, the Machiavellian elites, um, they introduced a method called the bread and circus, I'm sorry, a belief called the bread and circus belief. And this was a belief that they placed upon Americans saying that as long as they kept us fed and entertained, we will not rebel 
against their controlling antics. And when you think about it, they're kind of right. I mean, there's a lot of people that has waking up, and thank God for that. But just think of the ones that have it and they refuse because they are comfortable with this. Working, coming home, eating, going to sleep, paying bills. I mean, you know, the, the regular, the programming, instead of trying to wake up to some of the things. And don't get me wrong, we all have to work for a living and do what we have to do. But... Um, there should be some type of awareness with this so you can have some type of balance to not overindulge in the programming lifestyle forever, you know? Um, and the fact that majority of everyone in the world is busy working, trying to accomplish their goals, um, you know, trying to shape their life. It's, you know, it's rare to find many people. That are aware of what's going on. There are a lot. Like I said, thank God, fortunately. But like I said, due to this program life that the elites have uh, developed for us in society, we're so wrapped up in those things that sometimes it's hard to see the things that are going on around you until it's too late. Um, yeah, guys, I mean... That's how I feel about us being so wrapped up all the time and working. You know, people always say chasing the bag and, you know, all of this. Because a lot of the times you have these people around you, these gang stalkers, and they're, com they're constantly comparing you to others and trying to make you feel like you're not doing enough. And it's pushing you more and more into this programmed society. To, it's like a rat race to try and compete and get neck and neck with someone else. That's why I never compare myself to anyone else. I don't care if someone has something better and bigger than me. If that's not what I want, I'm not going to chase it just to say I'm one up with someone else. I'm going to be myself and I'm going to do what works for me. I advise everyone out there to never ever compare your life to someone else's. Never ever say, oh, I'm this age, I should have this, I should be here. Because that's not true. Everyone's journey is different. And I'm so sick of people putting others down based on the material things that they have. The material things. You know? You're not saying how sweet this person is. How highly intelligent this person is. You know? How enlightened this person is. How you can learn so much from this person and grow from this person. How the healing nature of this person. The things that really matter. Not how fat their pockets are. Not how big their house is. Not how fancy their car is or their clothes. You know, those things don't matter at the end of the day. Because those are not the things that God looks at. You know, those are the things that the elites look at, the handlers look at, you know? And it doesn't get you in a good place with these people. It just puts you in a situation where you feel like you're not enough. You don't have enough. It turns you slowly into those people that you don't want to become. Slowly turns you into those people that are harassing you, you know? About what you don't have. About what they feel like you should become. I'm sick of it, guys. I'm sick of it. Um, you know, I realize that in this world, having a good heart gets you nowhere. Um, people just really, majority care about money and material things. Nobody cares about spiritual enlightenment and, you know, trying to find themselves and get closer to God. I'm not a religious person. I don't know the Bible like that. But I am a spiritual person and I do know that God exists and I do know that being a good person and be a, you know, good at heart, uh, warm hearted person, a good natured person will get you far any day than being a greedy, self-centered, um, competing person. And I'm, I don't judge anyone, but what, what bothers me is when a good hearted person tries to help someone genuinely from their heart and the person takes it and beats them up with it. And you can be trying to give someone helpful advice and really help them 
and they take it as criticism or a, or um, or an opinion that's just not that they don't want to agree with. Guys, everyone has an opinion, and I don't think anyone should be bashing anyone because of how they feel about something. Or I don't think anyone should. It's like people are being punished for caring about people these days. You know, it's weird. It's like the good people are being punished for caring. But guys, I want that to inspire you to care more, love more. Love will outweigh all of this eventually. Um, I wanted to come through and get let you guys know about this because there are many manipulating people out there that are just looking to be handlers to vulnerable people. And we're not going to be those people, all right? So um, I hope everyone takes care of themselves continuously, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Listen, guys, put yourself first, love yourself first, and then help others. Heal yourself first, then help heal others. Try to help and love others. If no one is appreciative to your time and help and love, back away. Don't put yourself in a negative space trying to help if they don't want it, okay? I love you guys so much. Please um, like this video, share this video, um, and until the next video, oh, have a, a great weekend, guys, and until the next video, peace and love.